Hi guys, in this video we are going to discuss the problem 2572 from lead code. The problem's name is count the number of square free subsets. Now in this problem the constraints are actually pretty lenient. So some kind of a brute force solution or some kind of you know not such optimized solution actually work over here. But I wanted to show you the best solution possible so, uh, so that even if the nums length over here is let's say uh, 10 to power 6 right or something of that sorts or 10 to power 8 even. Uh, or 10 to power 7 let's say even that is acceptable or even if the individual values goes up to let's say something of uh, 10 to power uh, like 70 or 80 even th uh, that becomes acceptable so that's why i'll be discussing a pretty optim optimal solution for this that actually gives a uh, that beats 100 percent of the solution on lead code so let's start to understand what the problem says so i'll not be going through the problem per se but i'll definitely be discussing the solution or i'll be discussing what the problem wants without going through the description of the question so we uh, we are supposed to find the subsets or uh, let's call it valid valid subsets now what is a valid subset a valid subset the first condition is it should be non empty right and the second condition is that the product of it so let's say we have two numbers 6 and 7 right the product of them is 42 so the product of the uh, elements in that particular subset should not be divisible by any prime number or, or any square number so the product isn't divisible by a square number now in this question it's actually not that tough but only two things are actually required so the first thing is understanding of basic uh, mathematics right so as you guys might know that we can write any number as a product of the pri of some prime numbers for example let's take 21 for example we can write 21 as 3 into 7 right both of them are prime numbers let's say we have an another number 14 14 can be written as 2 into 7 or let's say 20 20 can be written as 2 into uh, 5 into 2 or 2 into 2 into 5 right all of these are prime numbers so that's obvious now so any number can be written as a product of prime numbers so what would happen is that any subset also would be written as a product of prime numbers so a, sub a subset could have many elements right now i want the product of the elements of this subset so technically it would be the pr uh, product of all the prime numbers in this particular subset right so let's say there was a prime number a then a prime number b c d e right so it would be uh or let's say the subset was x y z these were the three elements now x can be written as a into b y can be written as c into d and z can be written as f into a cool so now this would become a into b into c into d into f into a cool so now is is this number divisible by a square number yes it definitely is divisible over here you can see that uh, the prime number a is appearing two times so now since a is appearing two times hence it would be the number is divisible by a square right now a is a prime number so let's say a is any value now let's say a is equal to um three so that would mean that the entire number would actually be divisible by 9 that is 3 square so it's divisible by a uh, prime number so that's not acceptable what else can i do so other thing i can say over here is that since i want that it should not be divisible by a square number so all the prime numbers in the product of it should be unique that's all i need for, to solve this question now to, uh, to understand some more concepts what i can say is since the numbers are limited to 30 right there are only limited prime numbers before 30 so in total there are 10 prime numbers before that so prime number 2 3 5 then we have 7 right then 8 is not a prime 9 is not a prime 10 is another prime 11 is a prime so is 13 then we have okay 17 then we have 19 then we have 23 okay 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and then we have 29 yeah so these are the 10 prime numbers that are before 10 or before 30 so that's all we need to check <coughs> so since the number of primes are actually small or they are only in uh, uh, 10 or in, in the range of 10 what we can do is that we can utilize the standard approach of calculating a subset so the uh, the standard approach of calculating all the subsets or all the sets is actually using recursion right so in recursion we call a function and then we select that at every index there would be two possibilities so at every index there will be two possibilities of either selecting that particular number or not selecting the particular number 
right so let's call it possibility a and possibility b and then we can return a plus b cool but what would be the terminating condition so the terminating uh, terminating condition would happen okay let me you know make it a bit bigger okay okay so what's the terminating condition condition the terminating condition would be index is equal to n so when i have seen all the elements then i'll do this now a actually means that i am not considering current index b means that i am considering current index now is it always a uh, possible for me to consider the current index no it's not so it could be the case that the uh, that the product i am already having or the subset i have already considered for this recursion is actually containing a prime number p which is also available in this number b right in that case the possibility b is not possible or it's not possible for me to multiply or add this particular number into the subsets i'm forming right so in that case b won't won't be added so there needs to be a check for b now uh, how how would we check uh, check b so b can easily be checked i need to check all prime numbers or let me say that i just need to mult, uh, need to write b as a product of prime numbers then i need to check that any of these primes shouldn't occur more than two times or more than one time shouldn't occur two or more times the other check is that the subset i've already considered so in this recursion loop itself i'll be having actually a mask to denote that what all prime numbers or what, what all prime numbers are available in the product of the current number that is being made right so the <coughs> the mask would also have some prime numbers let's call the prime number as pm the current number also has some prime numbers let's call it pn so there should not be any intersection between pm and pn now pm size can go at max up till 10 it won't actually but yeah just giving a upper bound let's call it 10 and this can also go up till 10 right so if there's any interaction uh, intersection between the two then i cannot op operate else i can operate cool that that's the entire logic for this now one more thing so one more thing remaining over here is n is less than 1000 right it would be best if we could actually reduce it even this would actually work you need not reduce it but in order to get the that particular solution which beat 100% of them we should reduce it so we can play with frequencies right so a important observation is that other than one so if one is one of the elements then it's possible for me to multiply one with one with one with one right so a subset can contain or i can say a subset or a valid subset can contain more than one ones right more than one ones but any other number cannot be contained more than two time now why is that the case because if i'm considering any number a in the subset and i'm again considering the number a in the subset then a into a is actually a factor or we can say a square is a factor so it's not a valid uh, valid number itself right or a, a valid subset itself so any other number can't appear twice So this is important thing to use because now we'll just use a frequency, let's say hash map. So hash map of frequencies. This was this would decrease the size of our uh, array <coughs> to thirty because at max you uh, like the values would be from one to thirty. Okay, a of i would be going from one to thirty. Now since we are using only unique values, so our size was would decrease to thirty itself. The frequency map would contain a uh, the frequencies of each of those indexes so whenever i'm utilizing this function b over here that would mean that i'm considering the current uh, index or the current uh, number then i can say that i can consider any of those let's say the frequency of the number i is f right 
सो आई कैन से दैट आई कैन कंसिडर एनी ऑफ दोज एफ फ्रिक्वेंसी तो आई जस्ट मल्टीप्लाई दिस नंबर वाई एफ आई ऑफ दैट मेक सेंस राइट कुल सो वॉट्स नाउ सो द अदर लास्ट थिंग रिमेनिंग इज दैट वी हैड अ स्पेशल केस ओवर हेयर सो वन वी वी वर ऑलरेडी इग्नोरिंग वन फॉर द सबसेट्स सो नाउ दे वुड लेट से देर एक्स वन इज अवेलेबल सो वॉट कैन वी डू विद द एक्स वन सो ऑल ऑफ दीज वन वुड हैव एक्चुअली पावर ऑफ टू टू पावर वन माइनस वन सबसेट्स और नॉन एम टी सबसेट्स देर वुड भी टू टू पावर एन सबसेट्स इन टोटल ओवर एयर टू टू पावर एक्स सबसेट्स इन टोटल वन ऑफ द सबसेट इज एक्चुअली एम टी सो टू टू पावर एक्स माइनस वन सबसेट वुड भी दैर विच आर नॉन एम टी सो एनी ऑफ दोज टू टू पावर एक्स माइनस वन सबसेट्स कैन एक्चुअली बी यूज बाय द लेट से द नंबर ऑफ सबसेट्स वी आर एबल टू अपटेन विदाउट कंसिडरिंग वन आर एक्चुअली वाई राइट सो आई कैन यूज दैम विद एनी ऑफ दोज वाई सबसेट्स करेक्ट और आई कैन यूज दैम इंडिविजुअली एज वेल कुल नाउ दोज वाई सबसेट्स कुड एक्चुअली हैव बीन यूज विदाउट कंसिडरिंग दीज वन so this would be my valid uh, this would be my final answer let's look at the code the code is a bit long but it's fairly simple let's look at the solutions i had actually posted a editorial over here not to be it is yeah okay cool so that's what i'm doing on the question so you can see over here firstly i'm uh, clearing the maps so yeah then i'm populating the maps also i'm considering a prime map now why why do i need to consider a prime map so these are the prime numbers that are less than 30 that i've already uh, like already written before or already explained before now in order to use bit masking over here or in order to uh, you can actually use a vector instead of a bit masking but uh, bit masking is obviously faster than using a vector so in order to use bit masking i need to know that uh, which prime number appear appears at which index so that's the reason i'm i'm populating a prime map so this actually says that okay so then uh, element 2 is present at the location 0 the element 3 is present at the location Uh, one then element twenty nine is present at the location nine, <coughs> so that basic stuff is being done over here. After that, I have to clean the uh, clean the array, or I have to only select the unique values. So for that, I am using a set. You can get rid of that if you want. After that, I am populating the nums with only the unique values. So the code from here till here is only doing that thing. So it's cleaning up the array or the ve vector num. and it's adding it with only those values that are unique or it's just uh, like keeping the uh, unique values in it so like for example if the set was 1 2 2 2 now it uh, it would only be 2 no, no why not 1 because we are explicitly negating 1 over here the set if the set was 2 2 3 now it would be only 2 3 cool so the number of sets possible without considering ones itself would be given by this function so if you want i can go through this function so it's a, ba a basic way of constructing the Uh, set uh, subsets or the sets so what i'm doing over here is that uh, the first condition is that my result would be without uh, without if i'm not considering the particular number in in the current uh, in the current set you can say in that case <coughs> in that case this would be the number of sets so i'll be uh, going for the next number without updating my mask itself right if i'm uh, if i'm going to update my mask So firstly, I need to check if the current number can be multiplied or not. So for that, I've used this function. I've already explained it, explained it in detail. Uh, but if you want, you can go through this function yourself. Uh, so I'll check if my mask when multiply is not equal to zero. Now why is that the case? Now mask uh, the value which I'm returning from get mul is supposedly set to zero in case I cannot do that particular operation, right? So returns zero for invalid mask or invalid operation. I can say over here. so if that is not the case then i can say that uh, i can also consider b as one of the elements in in the current subset so my result would be updated to result plus frequency of nums of index as as i said that i can use any of those uh, elements that were available to me so let's say there were x occurrences of the current element then any of those x occurrences can be used so using any of those x occurrences multiplied by whatever value i get when i consider the current mask cool then i return the result so yeah that's it for the question after that in order to calculate uh, like when one is present so what i'll have to do is that the number of sets without considering one plus the number of sets without considering one into the number of non empty subsets of one right plus the non empty subsets of one itself uh, so over here i have actually used uh, the power operation or the binary exponentiation function 
this is pretty handy you can actually copy this code and uh, keep it in a local repo or something because uh, if you use the standard or the built in functionality of a power function it will overflow over here cool so that's it for the solution i hope this was a bit long video i guess but i hope you understood the solution well and you are able to code it on your own if you still have any doubts you can always let me know in the comment section below cool guys thanks a lot for watching this video bye bye